Hello and welcome to today's lecture on instruction pipeline. In the last lecture, I have discussed in detail the basic concepts of pipelining. What is pipelining? When can it be implemented? And how can it be implemented? In general terms, I have discussed that. And if you remember, I told that pipelining can be implemented for a task. If a particular task is repeated large number of times, and if you look at the processor, I mean the way the processor works, a computer, processor of a computer works, you will find that as soon you, as soon as you turn the power on, it, st it, it starts executing instructions because a pro, uh, because basic job of a computer is to execute program. And program is nothing but a <coughs> or say an ordered sequence of instructions. And uh, whether it is a, an application program or a systems program, irrespective of that, you will find that a program is nothing but an ordered sequence of instructions. And obviously, the you have to uh, later on you will understand the significance of this uh, of the meaning of this ordered. Why ordered is ne necessary? Because you cannot really arbitrarily uh, write a sequence of instructions. There should be some ordering depending on the application you are implementing. So, instruction pipelining is very important, and particularly we will see that instruction pipeline is being used. Uh, since uh, 80s in processors, it is implemented since 80s. And here is the outline of today's lecture on instruction pipeline. After giving a brief introduction, I shall talk about ideal conditions, that means the ideal conditions for instruction pipeline, then how the instruction pipeline can be implemented. I shall discuss about CPI of a multi cycle implementation then pipeline registers, need for pipeline registers, then speed up achieved by using instruction pipelining and of course, there is some limits on instruction pipelining that also I shall discuss in this lecture. Uh, as I have already mentioned, computers execute billions of instructions, so instruction throughput is what matters to improve the performance of a processor instruction uh, throughput is very important, throughput of a processor when for executing instructions is very important and that is the reason why uh, instruction pipelining has been used for a long time and this is the first kind of parallelism that was incorporated in processors since 1980s. And the earliest, okay, as I mentioned since 1984 pipelining was used to enhance the processor speed and it is an and I have already mentioned that pipelining is nothing but an implementation technique. That means, you can have a an instruction set architecture, I say instruction set architecture represents the specification and that specification can be implemented in many ways. A processor with the same ISA can be non pipeline, a processor with the same ISA can be pipeline. So, the instruction set will not change. So, far as the user's view or programmer's view of the is concerned, it will not change, but the there will, there will be difference in the execution time, there will be speed up, and so on. So, uh, I without affecting the ISA implementation is done. And in the last lecture, I have discussed about the 
MIPS processor, ISA of MIPS, uh, MIPS processor and discuss the uh, non pipeline implementation of MIPS processor. And today I shall extend it for pipeline implementation. <coughs> How can it be done? So, to implement instruction pipeline, these are the following steps to be performed. Number one is divide instruction execution across several stages. So, what you have to do here the task is execution of an instruction and that task has to be divided a number of sub tasks. As I mentioned a pipelining can be implemented if a task can be divided into more than one sub task. So, the execution of the instruction should be divided into several sub tasks that is one very important requirement. Second is each CPU accesses only a subset of CPU's resources. The central processing unit will have various resources like arithmetic logic unit, adder, resistors, multiplexer, bus and so on. So, uh, a subset of these resources will be used for uh, executing a particular uh, subtask or uh, rather uh, subtask of an instruction and different instructions are in different stages simultaneously. Here uh, as you have seen in our earlier example, whenever you are executing several tasks in a pipeline manner, different subtasks of different tasks will be in different stages of execution. Similarly, here also you will find that uh, that uh, that subtask of different instru different instructions will be in different stages of execution when you go for implementing instruction pipeline. And ideally, a new instruction can be issued in every cycle, as we have already seen in the earlier case. Per cycle, one task is uh, entering the system. And here also, we shall try to uh, I mean issue, I mean one instruction will be uh, entering the pipeline when you go for executing instruction, but uh, I have used a term in the beginning ideally. That means, ideally this, this is can this is the uh, this is the possibility, but in real life you will see that uh, we may have to deviate from this ideal condition and cycle time is determined by the longest stage as I have already discussed at length in the last lecture. You may have different uh, you know sub uh, different stages and different stages may take different amount of time to perform the a, a different sub tasks and the longest sub task the, the stage which is taking longest time will decide the clock frequency of the pipeline system. So, uh, this is these are, these are the basic implementation issues. Now, coming to the simple risk data path, let us consider uh, the non pipeline data path, we have already discussed it at length. This is that MIPS uh, uh, data path, uh, which has got uh, first stage is performing instruction fetch, second is stage is performing instruction decode and register fetch, third stage is performing execution, fourth stage is performing memory access, fifth stage is performing write back. So, you have got five different stages uh, and uh, these are the five different you know uh, uh, operations which are being performed while executing an instruction. So, uh, it is natural for us to uh, implement a stage such that each of these operations is performed in each stage. So, we shall be uh, implementing pipeline with five different stages. 
and particularly uh, we, we have taken up the risk like processor for implementation of pipeline uh, because of various advantages of uh, risk like proce risk like processors or risk processors number one is all AOLU operations are performed on register operands i have already highlighted in detail the difference between risk and risk processors and particularly uh, the risk processors are simpler uh, in terms of uh, implementation and, and these are the key features again highlighted all ALU operations are performed on register operands and separate instruction and data memory. So, we shall be using two separate memories instruction memory where programs will be stored. and another memory that will be used is data memory. <coughs> and later on we shall see use of these two memory uh, systems in a single system will help in implementing pipelining. It will facilitate easy implementation of pipelining. Uh, only instructions which access memory are load and store instruction. So, load and store instructions are the only instructions which will access memory, because we have seen that uh, ALU operations involve only registers. That means, the operands will be taken from registers, results will be also stored in registers for all arithmetic and logical operations. And uh, as I have already mentioned, instructions can be broken uh, into the following parts, instruction fetch from instruction memory, instruction decode and operand read, instruction execution, load and store operands, uh, write back results in registers. And to highlight again the operation of different cycles, uh, uh, there is it, they, you can see the left hand side that is instruction fetch is in is said in shaded form. And so, the operation that is performed in instruction fetch cycle is you are loading the instruction register, uh, you have got an instruction register and that instruction register you are loading uh, by reading the instruction from the memory by the address supplied by the program counter. So, program counter is giving you the address and that address is used to fetch the instruction from the memory and that is being loaded in the uh, instruction register. In addition to that, it is also uh, performing the calculation of the next program counter value by adding 4 to the uh, present value of the program counter. So, NPC is equal to uh, PC plus 4 that operation is also performed in this instruction fetch uh, 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 stage you can say. Then the next uh, stage your instruction decode, instruction decode uh, will take the input from this register uh, uh, instruction register and it will uh, apply that the instruction register will provide input to the register file. So, you can see offer end A will come from the from a particular register and the field 6 to 10 will provide you the, the op address of offer end 1 and uh, offer end B will be taken from another register and the uh, field 15 to 16 will provide you the uh, address of the register. So, these two are the offer end addresses A and B. And that will be applied to the registers and also in this particular stage you will calculate the immediate uh, data immediate uh, you know that uh, add the, uh, value by adding the um, immediate 16 bit immediate data is available as part of this instruction and this is sign extended to generate 32 bit data in this stage also. So, uh, of course, it will depend what kind of instruction it is executing. So, 
if it is uh, uh, you know ALU operations obviously this will not be required, but whenever uh, load store instructions are performed then uh, this operation is required. However, the hardware is there uh, for both uh, I mean reading registers as well as for generating the immediate data sign extension of the immediate data. So, this is the instruction decode. So, this can be the second stage of the pipeline in our pipeline implementation of the processor. Then the third stage uh, will perform the execution. So, third in the execution cycle uh, depending on the instruction that is getting executed it will perform different things. For example, one possibility is that ALU output will be equal to uh, A value of A that is being applied here and the immediate data that is being applied here. So, these two will be added to generate an address. So, gen generate some result with the help of this third address. Actually, this will be needed for uh, in load and store instructions where the address is generated in this manner. Then it can perform different arithmetic and logical operations and depending on that uh, instruction uh, the that type of instruction ALU output will be equal to A, a function B that means, uh, depending on the operation to be performed addition, subtraction, multiplication uh, then and or. So, uh, the two operands are available here and uh, that operation is being performed bit by bit operation or addition or subtraction whatever it may be and result is produced here. Then ALU output is equal to A operation immediate. So, whenever you are performing immediate using immediate mode of addressing then it will perform this operation A value of A will be uh, applied to one arm of the ALU, another arm will be provided with this immediate data and that those two will be added and uh, it will produce the result here. Uh, rather not added it can be any operation uh, provided by the ALU control signals. Then the ALU output ne uh, next one is your uh, NPC plus immediate. So, sometimes it is used to generate the uh, address. So, NPC which is applied here with that immediate data will be added to generate a address which has to be subsequently loaded in the program counter. So, this type of thing will be required in branch, jump, this type of instructions. So, and of course, this will be dependent on some condition. So, condition is decided here that condition value 0 calculation is also done that means, to uh, uh, whether the uh, result is 0 that uh, computation is done and depending on that uh, this um, multiplexer output is selected whether it will go from this branch address or it will be taken from the PC plus 4. So, this this, this is also done in stage four, uh, 3. Then uh, for load and store instructions you will require the memory access. So, that is performed in uh, that can be done in stage 4 where uh, you will load uh, that there is a register load memory data which will be loaded by the uh, value uh, coming from the memory and address will be provided by the ALU. So, ALU output is giving you the memory address and that output is uh, uh, applied to the memory and the data is being stored in this load memory address register or it can be memory ALU output. So, uh, the value of B I mean B will be loaded in the memory location. So, in this particular case register file will provide you the data will provide the data and address is supplied by the ALU and uh, in that that is your uh, load instruction where the data will be loaded into the memory and these are the conditional cases. If condition then ALU output is loaded into the program counter, ALU output is loaded into the program counter this way uh, else PC is equal to next PC. So, you can see these are the uh, it will uh, this fourth uh, stage 4 will perform all the memory operation needed for different types of instructions and lastly that last stage uh, is the write back stage. In the write back cycle the, uh, the, the, the particular register has to be loaded, write back means you are essentially writing back uh, the result into the register. So, the multiplexer output is providing you the, uh, the value to be stored and it will go to 
the resistor, the address will be supplied by the instruction itself. So, the in the that, that is the field uh, <coughs> that is the field supplied by the uh, by the instruction field uh, 16 to 20 that will that will give you the address and data will be coming from the uh, output of the multiplexer and that value will be loaded in the proper resistor or it can be uh, that ALU output can be directly also loaded in some instructions or uh, that the data can be coming from the load memory data. That means, in case of store this memory data has to be loaded into the register. Uh, so, sorry that is your if that is your load the other one was store. Storing means you are storing the value from the register into the memory that is store and whenever you are loading it from the memory to the register it is uh, load. Okay. So, load and store in all these cases this write cycle is write back operation is required. So, you can see we have divided the uh, ALU operation in five stages, identified the functions to be performed by different stages and also we have identified the necessary hardware resources that you require uh, for different stages. So, in this way you can form the different stages and implement the pipeline system. Now, uh, before we go for this pipeline implementation, uh, let us see uh, some kind of uh, comparison of the of this I mean before we can implement pipelining and compare it with the existing non multi cycle implementation. Let us see uh, what is the value of CPI in multi cycle implementation and also later on we shall see what is the value of CPI in case of pipeline implementation. As you can see here uh, <coughs> Uh, as you know, we have got different types of operations like uh, data manipulation, the data manipulations are essentially the ALU operations. In our uh, pipeline in this particular case, uh, if we go for multi cycle implementation that is mean one cycle for this, one cycle for this, one cycle for this, one cycle for this and one cycle for this. How many cycles are needed to perform different uh, arithmetic and logical operations? You can see all our arithmetic and logical operations involve only the resistors, only the resistors. So, uh, you do not require data to read from the memory. So, it will require uh, first cycle for fetching instruction, second cycle is required for instruction decode, third cycle is required for execution because memory read, read is not involved. However, you will require another cycle to write the uh, result back into the register. So, you require four cycles, you can skip the you can skip the uh, the memory cycle. So, in instead of 4 cycles you require 5 cycles you require 4 cycle for all data manipulation. Now, what about the data transfer? The data transfer operations involves uh, transferring data uh, from the from the memory to register or from register to memory, how many cycles it will involve. So, as you can see that from the whenever you are performing uh, store, then you will require only 4 cycles, because the, the data will come from the register and at this is generated in the third cycle, in the fourth cycle you can perform the writing operation. That means, your store will require 4 cycles. However, load will require 5 cycles. Why load will require 5 cycles? Because uh, you can see here uh, 
in the fourth cycle the address will be calculated and only in the fifth cycle, uh, fourth cycle you will read the data and fifth cycle you will be able to write the result into the register. So, five cycles will be required. So, we find that if we go for multi cycle implementation then four or five cycles are required. Now, comes the conditional uh, instructions there are uh, conditional <coughs> instructions. There, uh, there also you will require either 4 or 5 cycles depending on uh, whether you have to get the address from the memory whenever a branch is taken and store the result in the uh, result from that I mean you have to jump to that particular memory location. So, uh, uh, we find that either 4 cycles or 5 cycles are required for different types of instructions and you can we have done some computation here uh, branches and stores 4 cycles all other instructions 5 cycles. If this assumption is made then CPI becomes equal to 0 0.8 into 5 plus 0 0.2 into 4 because 80 percent of the instructions will require 5 cycles 20 percent only 4 cycles 4.8. However, as I have already told early operations can be allowed to complete in 4 cycles. In such a case uh, the breakup will be 40 percent of the instruction uh, are ALU operations, 20 percent are branch and stores and so you are left to it 40 percent which will require 5 cycles. So, 0 0.4 into 5 and 0 0.6 into 4. So, that gives you a CPI of uh, uh, 4.4. 4. So, we are getting a cycles per instruction is 4.4. Now, what is the objective of pipelining? Pipelining the implementation can help to reduce CPI. Our objective is to reduce the value of cycles per instruction. So, uh, by whenever you shall go for pipelining, you will see that this will be reduced to 1 instead of 4.4, .4, it will be reduced to 1. Uh, now, one very important requirement for pipelining is pipeline resistors. We have already discussed about the need for pipeline resistors. Pipeline resistors are essential part of all pipelines and there are four groups of pipeline resistors in the five stage pipeline. For our uh, pipeline, I mean for our uh, data path which we are interested in pipelining, we require uh, four stages of memory. Each group saves output from one stage and passes it as input to the next stage. So, uh, one, uh, one register uh, stage will be between instruction fetch and instruction decode that is why the name is instruction fetch slash if, if slash id. Second stage is id slash ex third is ex slash mem memory, fourth is mem slash wb. So, you require uh, four such different blocks of resistors for your pipeline implementation. So, this way each time something is computed uh, that something can be generated in a generation of effective address, generation of immediate value, generation of register content etcetera. So, these are computed by different stages and they will be stored in the registers. So, it is said saved safely in the content context of the instruction that needs it. So, you may be wondering why only 4 such stages of register files are required, why not 5. So, let us look at the pipeline. At each line red line you will require one, one register file one here, one here, one here and one here. Why not here in the beginning? The reason for that is that program counter is actually serving the uh, job for the register for that stage. That means, that instruction fetch stage uh, is getting its input from the program counter. 
So, program counter uh, is providing the necessary information for stage 1. So, you do not require a separate register file for stage 1. However, for the remaining stages you require separate registers. Now, uh, let us see how different how the pipeline registers are used in whenever you go for go, go on executing different instructions. So, this is the instruction fetch stage and this is the pipeline registers. These are the additional registers that you require apart from the registers that is present in the ALE. So, instruction fetch slash instruction decode. So, this is at the interface of instruction fetch and instruction decode stage. So, uh, the instruction fetch stage will perform fetching of instruction from the memory and it will store the result into this instruction fetch instruction decode register. And then as we go to the next cycle, you can see the output of the instruction fetch uh, instruction decode stage will provide the necessary input to the instruction decode stage that will correspond to the instruction 1. And uh, at that time you will see the second stage uh, the, the first stage will be performing instruction fetch. So, first stage is performing instruction fetch and the result that was produced by instruction fetch is now uh, available in that uh, register pipeline register which is now applied to the instruction decoder. And in the next cycle what will happen? that instruction decode stage will perform necessary decoding and uh, that instruction decode stage will uh, put the result in that instruction decode uh, instruction execution, execution uh, register and similarly the instruction fetch register uh, instruction fetch stage of the uh, second instruction will go to the instruction fetch instruction decode register. If you go to the third cycle, we can see the output of the instruction fetch is, go, is going to the instruction decode for the second instruction. On the other hand, the output of the instruction fetch execution uh, register pipeline register is applied to the execution so for the that corresponds to the first, first instruction. So, you can see that uh, that information about the different instructions are being stored in this pipeline registers and they are used properly for, a, for, uh, for performing parallel operations. So, here you can see in the third cycle instruction fetch is going on for instruction 3, instruction decode is going on with coming uh, with the inputs coming from this pipeline register and uh, similarly execution of the first instruction is going on with inputs coming from this pipeline register id slash ex. And in the fourth cycle, in the, th at the end of the third cycle, the results produced by the three uh, stages are again stored in these three registers and in the next cycle uh, you are getting output from the registers and going to memory the corresponding to the in the fourth cycle the uh, that execution and memory uh, register uh, pipeline register will provide the output which can be stored in the memory and uh, similarly the for the that is for the first instruction for the second instruction that uh, instruction decode was done so output was stored in this register pipeline register and which uh, which which will provide the input to the execution stage for the next instruction instruction 2 similarly uh, for the third instruction instruction fetch was completed and that was that is now available in the pipeline register and that is being applied to the instruction decode so in this way uh, this will continue and uh, continue the execution and typically we will not think too much about the pipeline registers and one must assume one just assumes that values are passed magically down stages of the pipeline. Uh, all I am trying to uh, tell you at this point you see uh, pipeline registers are present. So, I have explained in detail how the pipeline registers are being used to save the intermediate results produced by different stages in different cycles, but subsequently we shall not bother about it. So, we shall assume that magically the information is passing from one stage to another and uh, results is being generated and parallel execution of different stages 
uh, of I mean uh, different inst instructions of di uh, different instructions uh, are getting executed in their different stages. So, this is the uh, pipeline resistors and uh, you can defect the pipeline resistors in this way. You can see here uh, different instructions, this is this, this the top one corresponds to instruction 1, next line corresponds to instruction 2, next line corresponds to instruction 3, next line uh, the next line corresponds to instruction 4. So, uh, for different instructions the, uh, the, the resources that is being used are defected uh, for different instructions, but as you can see here if you consider a particular instant of time we will be finding that resources are uh, different instructions are using different resources at a particular instant of time. For example, if you consider say first, second, third and fourth cycle, in the fourth cycle this is the situation that means the right back is going on, sorry in the fourth cycle that uh, you are uh, that memory operation is going on. Uh, so, memory is getting memory resource is getting used up in addition to the that pipeline resistor and for instruction 1, for instruction 2 that ALU resource is being used uh, along with the pipeline resistor IDEX. Uh, for the third instruction uh, it is using the pipeline resistor instruction fetch instruction decode and also it is using the, uh, re the resistor resource and so far as the fourth instruction is concerned it is performing instruction fetch. So, instruction memory is being used. So, here you can see that instruction memory and data memory both are used, uh, both these resources are used simultaneously by different instructions. <coughs> now, uh, you may be wondering why is pipeline, pipelining risk processors easy? I have already um, explained that all operands are in resistors and if they are not in resistors then implementing pipeline will be difficult because uh, when executing instructions uh, you have to fetch the operands from memory. So, that will uh, in incorporate com more complication and that is the reason why uh, CISC, in, uh, CISC, uh, CISC processor implementation of pipeline for CISC processors is rather difficult, but uh, it has to be done later on we shall consider the pipeline implementation of say Pentium and how can it be done we shall see later on. Then the only operations that affect memory are loads and store, I have already mentioned about it. So, although pipelining could con con conceivably be implemented for any architecture, it would be inefficient. That means, for CISC processors it will be inefficient, Pentium are characterized characteristics of CISC or RISC. Actually, uh, Pentium belongs to the CIS category, CIS instructions are internally converted to risk like instructions. So, this is just a hint, you will see that uh, to implement pipelining internally complex instructions are converted into risk like micro operations, then pipelining is implemented. So, directly the instructions cannot be pipelined, but uh, it will require some hardware which will convert complex, complex risk like instructions into a, a several uh, simple risk like operations, then they can be pipeline. So, that, that we shall discuss later on for the time being uh, be satisfied with this observation and okay, this I have already discussed in detail operation of different stages. And now, uh, here after incorporating the uh, different pipeline resistor, this will be the look. That means, this is the first stage, <coughs> stage 1 that is your instruction fetch stage and this is the instruction decode and register fetch and in between that instruction fetch, instruction decode. Uh, uh, pipeline resistors have been incorporated. Similarly, 
between that instruction decode register fetch and execution uh, uh, stage instruction decode register fetch stage and execution uh, stage, we have put another register the pipeline register that is your id slash ex. Similarly, between the execution execute stage and memory access stage, another register pipeline register have been incorporated that is your ex slash mem registers uh, file and finally, between the memory access and write back another register stage have been incorporated uh, that is your memory slash wb. Now, you can see uh, we have uh, not only we have added some register, we have also removed some registers that also you have to notice. For example, the non pipeline implementation if you go back you will find that we had some uh, registers like instruction register there was an instruction register, there was a load memory data register. Those registers are no longer required, because these registers uh, the, uh, the function of these registers are being implemented uh, with the help of uh, these registers. For, the, for example, that instruction register uh, uh, is no longer required, because this particular register instruction phase slash instruction decode, this register is actually holding the uh, instruction uh, for the next stage. So, that instruction register is no longer required which is required in non pipeline implementation. Similarly, at the end of this data memory there, wa there was a load memory data register in the non pipeline implementation that is not required because this, uh, this particular register pipeline register memory uh, slash write, mem write back mem slash uh, wb this particular uh, pipeline register will hold the data coming out from the data memory and uh, that will uh, provide it to the multiplexer for storing it in the register or uh, uh, in the subsequent cycle. So, um, we, we can remove few registers, but obviously we have to incorporate uh, more complex and larger number of registers to implement pipelining. So, uh, Whenever you implement this pipelining, uh, then the basic idea is each, each instruction spends one clock cycle in each of these five execution stage, based on our uh, you know that ideal condition. We have we have assumed that all these stages will take same time, and uh, they are uh, as a consequence uh, the time, time the clock cycle required is one. So. Uh, the each instruction spends one clock cycle in each of the five execution stages and during one clock cycle the pipeline can process five different instruction which can which can be depicted in this manner as well. So, we have seen uh, the, the different ways of uh, depicting it this is one visualization for the purpose of visualizing the pipeline execution either you can visualize in this manner or you can visualize it in this manner. So, uh, both are used in, uh, in different situations. So, this corresponds to, ins uh, corresponds to instruction 1, next line corresponds to instruction 2, uh, third line corresponds to instruction 3 or uh, to generalize it i plus uh, 2 that is the, uh, first one is i, second one is i plus 1, third one is i plus 2 and so on. And uh, this depiction where you are telling clock number at the top 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and then you are writing down the num name of the different stages. Alternatively, you can use this where also you have got the different instructions in order that is i, i plus 1, i plus 2 and <coughs> you can show the different blocks, different stages instruction fetch, instruction decode, ALU memory write back and so on and uh, clock cycles are also mentioned at the top clock cycle 1, clock cycle 2, clock cycle 3, clock cycle 4 and so on. So, this is the alternative visualization now coming to speed up. So, assume that a multi, uh, multiple cycle risk implementation has a 10 nanosecond clock cycle, loads take 5 clock cycles account for 40 percent of the instructions 
and all other instructions take 4 cycles. I have already explained this in detail and that is how we got a CPI of 4.4. Now, uh, only thing that has been added here, the cycle time has been given here that is equal to 10 nanosecond. So, whenever you consider the average instruction execution time, average instruction execution time for non pipeline will be equal to uh, non pipeline execution time will be equal to 10 nanosecond into CPI. CPI as you have already seen uh, this is that is equal to 0 0.6 into 4 because 40 per 60 percent of the instructions require 4 cycles and uh, 40 percent of the instructions will require uh, 5 cycles. So, this gives you uh, this gives you 4.4 3.4 and this will be equal to 4.4 plus 2 that is 4.4 into 10 that is your 44 nanosecond. And pipeline implementation how much time it will take? So, here one assumption has been made in pipeline implementation add 1 nanosecond to the clock cycle. Uh, why you are adding 1 nanosecond to the clock cycle? Because you have to take into account the delay of delay of the pipeline resistors. So, pipeline resistor will involve some, some delay. So, it will require 10 nanosecond plus 1 nanosecond that is your 11 nanosecond and 11 nanosecond uh, is the cycle time for execution time for each instruction. I mean uh, that is the rate at which it will come and as a consequence so we can say that average execution time, average execution time in case of pipeline implementation is 11 nanosecond. So, therefore, uh, speed up speed up is equal to 4. So, if we consider uh, pipeline and non pipeline implementation, non pipeline uh, multi cycle. Now, instead of multi cycle, if it is uh, if we consider uh, single cycle, in that case what is the speed up? So, for single cycle, in case of single cycle, the clock time period of the clock has to be 10 into 5, that is your 50 nanosecond. So, 10 into 5 because whenever you go for multi cycle implementation your average execution time will reduce, but if it is a single cycle then obviously your ex average execution time will be longer because the, uh, the to total delay for different stages you have to take into account to decide the clock frequency. So, 50 nanosecond. So, in that case uh, the speed up will be speed up will be equal to 50 by 11. So, uh, here it is uh, more than 4, so 4 point something 4.5 roughly. <coughs> now, so the above expression assumes a CPI of 1, here we have assumed that the pipeline processors always generates one output per cycle. So, do we expect this in practice? Any complications? Here is a question. We have assumed some ideal conditions and based on that ideal conditions, it is possible to have CPI is equal to 1. 
So, what were the ideal conditions? So, these were the ideal conditions. We assume that all the instructions are divided in independent parts, each taking a equal a nearly equal time. Now, the question is can instructions be divided into independent parts, each taking nearly equal time? That, that is not true, because the uh, whenever you are performing read operation from resistor, it will take much shorter time compared to reading from da reading data from memory. Similarly, <coughs> whenever you are performing add operation, time will be much less compared to whenever you perform multiply operation. So, even when you are performing ALU operations, different instructions will require different time that ALU operation execution time uh, that time will be different. Similarly, as I said uh, uh, read from memory and read from uh, registers their time also will be different. So, in practice uh, that cannot be true. Then, then another question another ideal condition was related to this question can instructions be executed in sequence one after the other in order in which they are written. So, uh, all I am trying to tell is in order execution as I said a program is nothing but an ordered sequence of instructions. The, the order in which they are present in the program, uh, they will be executed in the same order. That assumption will also not be true. Later on we will we'll see that we shall go for uh, some specialized process, I mean some processors where uh, there will be some kind of predictions or speculations where to improve the performance or performance of the processor, you have to allow out of order execution. So, in such situations uh, this, uh, this, this will not be valid. Third is are successive instructions independent of one another? This is a very common question. We assume that the instructions are independent. So, they can be executed uh, in a overlap manner since they are independent uh, there is no problem, but in reality that is not so. There will be various kind of dependencies, data dependence, control dependence and so on. So, because of these dependencies uh, they cannot, they are not really fully independent. So, uh, these assumptions are not valid. Last but not the least is there no resource constraint? That means, we assume that there is no resource constraint unlimited resources are available, but in practice it is necessary to impose some restriction on resources to reduce the cost of implementation. So, uh, the resources are to be optimally used and uh, whenever uh, we are not, when these ideal conditions are not satisfied, then your pipelining we, we shall not get CPI of 1 that CPI of 1, because we have to uh, add some bubble or it, it uh, some additional time will, time will be required, some time will be wasted, some clock cycles will be wasted and we shall deviate from this CPI of 1. So, our objective is to get CPI of 1, but because of these problems we, we, we shall not get CPI of 1. Okay. Another uh, last point that we would like to mention is limits on pipelining. We have seen the speed up is related to number of stages k. And uh, in an ideal situation when you are executing large number of instructions the speed up is k. Obviously, you will be tempted to increase the number of stages. So, instead of 5, why not go for uh, 10 stages? 
so that we get a speed up of 10 or why not 100 stages, so that we get a speed up of 100, but in practice then that cannot be done, because we have seen that primary requirement is that you have to divide an instruction into different parts and uh, you have to implement them by using hardware. So, uh, increasing the number of pipeline stages in a given, a given uh, logic block by a factor of k generally allows increasing clock speed and throughput by a factor of almost k as I, as I have already mentioned. Now, usually less than k uh, because of overhead such as latches and balance the delay in each stage. So, we, do, we do not get the exactly k as you have seen we got 4.4 or something like that, but pipelining has a natural limit natural limit is at least one layer of logic gates per pipeline stage. You see, you will be implementing the uh, pipeline with the help of hardware and that hardware will, will require at least one uh, logic, uh, logic uh, stage, usually uh, 8 to 10 logic stages are present in a single stage, but limit is at least one or usually two. So, that will put a limit on the maximum number of stages that you can have and practical limit is usually several gates 2 to 10 and of, of course, commercial designs are rapidly in nearing to this point. That means, in a commercial design you will find that trying to increase the number of pipeline stages to as many as possible, so that get, so that you get uh, uh, higher speed up. So, with this let us come to an end of this lecture and in my next lecture we shall discuss about those non-ideal conditions and the impact of those non-ideal conditions. Thank you.